CLC, short for Crystal Clear, debuted under Cube Entertainment in March 2015 as a five-member group. The original members consisted of leader and main vocal Sung Hee, main dancer Sung Yun, lead dancer, visual, and center Yoo Jin, lead vocal Sorn, and main rapper Yeon. Later in their career, Sung Hee passed the position of leader over to Sung Yun. Coming from Cube Entertainment, CLC had big shoes to fill, but also a lot of resources to fill them with. Their senior groups at Cube, specifically girl group 4 Minute, were massive successes that were making a name for Cube Entertainment among the top agencies of the K-pop industry. 4 Minute brought a new, ultra-charismatic image to girl group K-pop that demanded attention and empowered a large female audience. They essentially pioneered the girl crush concept that is still so prevalent in K-pop today. So, when CLC debuted with the song Pepe, the public was underwhelmed. Cube obviously wanted to take a different approach conceptually with CLC, but the public had been eating up 4 Minute style, especially after the release of their song Crazy. CLC's cute retro concept paled in comparison to the untamed girl crush power of their seniors. Pepe is not a bad debut song, but the circumstances under which it came about were. In January 2015, G-Friend debuted with the song Glass Bead, and were receiving a lot of attention for their own cute, refreshing concept. Days before Pepe was released, Red Velvet came out with the girly, upbeat song Ice Cream Cake, which got them their first win and skyrocketed their popularity. Pepe had a lot of competition, and unfortunately, it seemed to be losing the race. CLC's accompanying album, First Love, had abysmal sales compared to their seniors. However, Cube had invested a ton of money into CLC, and they weren't going to give up yet. CLC released their second EP, Question, only two months after their first in May 2015. The title track, Like, was a cute song, but had nothing special about it, especially in an already oversaturated market. Around this time, CLC, specifically Yayan, also had an attitude scandal regarding their treatment of their senior group, B2B. <laughs> Respecting your seniors in Korea is extremely important, and this event put more people off of CLC. They still saw no success. In 2016, Cube experienced a lot of changes internally, including a new CEO taking over. According to a Naver article, due to problems in the internal management, stagnating domestic popularity of their groups, member withdrawal and group disbandment, the company fell into a crisis. In 2016, as expected, the company recorded an operating loss of 5.7 billion Korean won. The new CEO then took office and found the situation of the company worse than he first imagined. He recalled problems that included long-suffering internal arguments and incidents, the biggest of which were fraud and dishonesty committed by its own employees. In the midst of this, CLC also saw lineup changes. Cube announced before the release of CLC's third EP that two members were being added to the group. When a group isn't having success, companies will use this tactic of bringing something or someone new and exciting into the group. In February 2016, Elki and Unbin were added to the group. Elki is from Hong Kong and was most likely brought to the group to try and receive more international attention. Unbin had just participated in the Mnet survival show Produce 101 and actually garnered quite a bit of attention for herself. She had a solid chance of making the final lineup of IOI, but Cube announced during the time Produce was airing that Unbin would be added to CLC, causing her ranking to go down in the show. Fans of Unbin were disappointed that she was being added to an unsuccessful group with a cute concept. Unbin had a rapper girl crush personality on Produce 101, and now her image would be entirely changed to fit CLC's concept. Elki and Unbin appeared in the group's third EP, Refresh, with the title track High Heels. Unfortunately, this comeback did worse than their other releases, and CLC was close to being given the scarlet letter name of Flops. The least favorite song that you promoted. Wow, 
아니 그때가 그때도 되게 힘들었었던 게 너무 큐트하고 너무 밝고 너무 막 소녀 근데 잘했어 사랑스럽고 하는 거를 별로 안 좋아 근데 What? 그런 건더 심해졌어 조금씩 음. 그러니까 데뷔 초부터 갑자기 2집 더 밝아지고 3집 더 귀여워지고 음. 그러면서 4집 Cube still had hopes for CLC although they weren't getting good results They pushed forward, having CLC release their fourth EP, Nuclear, and a Japanese EP in April 2016. At this point, CLC had almost constant releases and promotions, but couldn't seem to rise above their cloak of invisibility. Their new title track, No OO, still only did as well as their past title tracks, which wasn't good at all, honestly. The Japanese debut didn't make waves either. In June 2016, tensions rose between Cube and 4Minute. Their contract with Cube was about to expire, and so far only one of five members wanted to renew it. There had been no talk of disbandment, and the decision occurred suddenly, leaving fans hurt and outraged. Since this was also controversial, CLC stayed quiet until the next year. Once CLC released the song Hobgoblin in January 2017, it was obvious they were given what would have been a four-minute comeback. They did a complete and total 180 from their original concept and somehow killed it. Hyanna from 4Minute even assisted in curating the comeback. Although the public hadn't forgotten about Cube's problems, no one could deny CLC had struck a gold mine with this song and their new image. The members seemed to thrive in the new concept. It especially matched both the dancing and rapping styles of Sungyeon and Yeon, two of CLC's strongest members. Their EP, their EP Chris Style, had the best sales of anything they had released in their career, peaking at number six on the Billboard's world album charts. Not only that, they began receiving international attention as K-pop was becoming more popular in the West due to BTS and Blackpink. Although their domestic sales in Korea stayed almost the same, their image change was more eye-catching than anything else they had done. Unfortunately, Cube's creative directors decided to squash CLC's success with their next release. In August 2017, CLC released their sixth EP, Freezem, and the title track, Where Are You? The concept was soft and dreamy, the complete opposite of what Hobgoblin had been. Stark concept changes aren't necessarily bad, for example, Red Velvet and Luna have been very successful with having a different sound every comeback. But CLC was not popular enough to take the chance of doing something so drastic. People were loving their new girl crush image and were driven away by the innocent, pretty concept of where are you. If Cube had built off of the successful Hobgoblin concept, CLC most likely could have used that momentum to become a more popular group. Sadly, we'll never know what could have happened. Soren has stated on TikTok that she likes the song Where Are You, but it was so different than Hobgoblin. Please don't get me wrong. I thought this concept was cute, but I wasn't really having it. One, this song came out after a very successful comeback, I think Black Dress. And instead of pushing the very fierce concept, I don't want to throw shades, but the next song was this. And I was a little bit confused. I love the song though. I love the concept and everything, but it just came out at the wrong time. It felt more of like a winter vibe, but then it came out in the summer. Cube probably realized they made a mistake when Where Are You crashed and burned. They conjured up a new Girl Crush song in February 2018 called Black Dress with an EP of the same name. Black Dress repeatedly says, Can you see me now? Representative of how CLC was feeling about their situation. Can the public see them now that they are in a black dress? Now that they have returned to Girl Crush? Black Dress did well internationally and better than Where Are You domestically. It showcased a true and permanent change for CLC's concept. Who knows how much damage had already been done to their image, though. In May 2018, Cube debuted a new girl group, Idol. Their song La Ta Ta was a huge success, earning them their first win only 20 days after their debut. This did not bode well for CLC fans, who worried Cube would forget about CLC after Idol's immediate success. CLC had been around for three years and had still not achieved a music show win, although they had gotten close. These concerns became more real when CLC was about to reach the year mark of Black Dress's release with no new comeback. A month before this year mark in January 2019, 
CLC came out with their eighth EP, Number One, and the title track, No. I know, it sounds so wrong to be on an eighth EP and still not be given a full-length album, lightstick, tour, or anything. <laughs> anyway, Number One actually did well, mostly internationally, peaking at number five on the Billboard's World Albums chart. No also earned them their first music show win after four years since their debut. <laughs> CLC finally found their spot in the K-pop world with their new concept and musical sound. In May 2019, CLC released the digital single, Me, which was actually the second highest selling song the week it was released in the US. However, the success was not mirrored in Korea. Although CLC had this international acclaim, their home country still turned somewhat of a blind eye to them, meaning it was difficult to get more music show wins and just more success in general. Cube wasn't really doing anything to market off of CLC's international success either. Releasing music means nothing if a group can't be promoted properly. We said that if we actually get into the Billboard chart, we will buy a ticket, a flight to America, and we will go there and perform for you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> In September 2019, CLC released another digital single, Devil. Although the song still had CLC's touch, it was a lot brighter in style and reminiscent of Pepe with the retro visuals. CLC fans were disappointed though to see that the music video for Devil looked so low budget, especially compared to their little sister group Idol's extravagant videos. Once again, Devil did well internationally, but did not receive much recognition in Korea. CLC did not release another song until September 2020, an entire year after their last comeback. During the time they were gone, fans were scared CLC was not going to come back at all. Companies with other successful groups usually aren't interested in funding their groups that have not done as well as they want for a long time. But this comeback looked like a new beginning for CLC. The song Helicopter was strong, co-produced by Yeon, had eye-catching choreography, and Cube seemed to be rebranding CLC. They changed their logo and finally got official colors as a group, over five years since their debut. With more leadership changes at Cube, a lot more effort and money had been put towards Helicopter. Were they finally going to get the true revival they needed? Maybe things like a full album or a light stick? The answer seems to be no. Despite all of the hope, things came crashing down in December 2020. Elkie sent a legal notice to Cube requesting to have her contract with them terminated. She claimed that Cube had violated the contract by not paying her for some of her activities and also basically giving up on CLC. Cube told CLC that they would no longer be investing in them after 2020. While the members could still do solo activities under the company, they were not going to offer them full support as a group. Elkie specifically spoke on a sore spot for CLC and their whole fandom, the song La Vie en Rose. She said this song was initially a comeback for CLC. They had even recorded it and practiced the choreography, but at the last minute, it was given to the group Eyes One for their debut, becoming an instant hit. <laughs> she also expressed her disdain for the fact that Cube would not let the CLC members be as involved in the creative processes as they wanted to be. After this and many other missed opportunities, Elki saw no reason to stay. Not much happened with CLC after Elki's departure until June 2021. 
Eugen was revealed as a participant of Mnet's new survival show, Girls Planet 999, which shocked fans and gave a more definite feeling that CLC was over. In an interview on the show, Eugen corroborated what Elki had said about Cube dismissing CLC. <laughs> In November 2021, Soren released a statement that she terminated her contract with Cube and will be doing solo activities in Korea under a different label. Shortly after, in March 2022, Cube announced Sungyeon and Yeon had terminated their contracts. Finally, in May 2022, Cube announced the official disbandment of CLC. It came as no surprise to anyone, but still hurt after all that the girls had been through. Cube was sure to put one more nail in the coffin by copywriting the names CLC and Crystal Clear, so the girls will not be able to use the same name in any of their future activities. So now we beg the question, why was CLC never able to get a foothold in the Korean industry, especially after Cube put so much into their debut and promotions? They consistently released music, performed, and appeared on shows in the first half of their career, but the public just didn't latch on. One of the reasons people believe this happened is because CLC never really had a standout member. Cube attempted to push Ye in more by sending her to do solo work like on the show Good Girl, but it was too little too late and the public was not interested. All of the CLC members are very talented, but also quite introverted. They were funny when they were together, but shyer as individuals. There wasn't someone the public could recognize, like Nyon from Twice, Chu from Luna, or Won Young from Ive. Something that also worked against CLC is just the way the public perceives girl groups. User Longsleeves123 commented under a post on the subreddit Unpopular K-Pop Opinions. CLC has a negative image of being that flop group that has no solid proof that they have a large following, and all social media content is all about talking about their flop image. Having that kind of negative image is a career killer in the entertainment industry, because fans usually support groups that are already followed by other people or that have hype on them. There's a saying, no one likes you until many people like you in the entertainment industry. It's all about social proof and pre-selection. Prospective fans should feel that they are supporting a group that is supported too by other people. Girl groups are not like boy groups. Girl groups depend a lot on being a viral sensation and should appeal effectively to the general population if they need to have viral videos that highlight their it factor. I think this user worded it perfectly. CLC could not succeed without the help of the public, and their fan base wasn't doing much on its own to help streams, sales, and exposure. In a series of unfortunate events, CLC just lost any chance at success. So, here we are now in 2023. After everything CLC went through, where are they now? Sunghee is still signed with Cube, but seems to be keeping to herself. She is still active on her Instagram and sometimes posts covers on her YouTube. Yujin is still signed to Cube, but placed third overall in Mnet's survival show Girls Planet 999. She was able to debut in the project group Kepler as their leader. In their career so far, they have participated in the Mnet show Queendom and have released four mini albums. They will be active until about summer 2024. Sungyeon signed with Wild Entertainment, the same entertainment agency that Soren is now under. She is very active on Instagram and YouTube and still loves dancing. She recently was in Thailand teaching hopeful K-pop trainees dance. Yan signed with Superball Company as their first ever artist. She is active on Instagram and debuted solo in April with two songs, A Strange Way to Love and Cherry Coke. She is promoting Cherry Coke on music shows in Korea. As I mentioned before, Soren is signed to Wild Entertainment with Sungyeon. She has released quite a few solo songs, all in English. She loves to talk about CLC and include the other members in her content. One of her solo songs, Nirvana Girl, features Yeon and was choreographed by Sungyeon. She is super active on social media and has become somewhat of an influencer on TikTok and YouTube. 
She has stated many times that although CLC are not all together right now, they are not disbanded. CLC is a girl group that I used to be in. We're still a thing, by the way. We did not disband. We're still a thing. Um, right now, everyone is just doing their own thing at the moment. I've mentioned this quite often now that I really want my girls to come back together. If I get the right support and everyone's down and the timing is right, there's so many ideas that I have with the girls and I have the confidence to say that once we're back together, it's game over. But I am working really hard towards that and hopefully, hopefully, our time will come soon. Elki has returned to Hong Kong since she first terminated her contract with Cube and has been active on Instagram and YouTube. She has taken on some acting roles and seems to be focusing on that. Unben is also still signed with Cube and is pursuing an acting career. She acted in an apocalypse drama that came out recently called Duty After School. I know how frustrating it is for the fans because we did end it quite early. Uh, we could have done so much more and I honestly think till today we could have been not being biased or anything but I know how talented my girls are and I know if we have met like the right people and was giving the right concepts and if I personally had the chance to, to take charge of things um, in the creative process then I feel like we could have been one of the more popular groups out there but I mean it is what it is, you know, like. CLC's story is one we hear often in K-pop. A tale of wasted potential due to bad luck in the volatile public. What do you guys think? Do you agree with the reasons I listed for why CLC failed? Or do you think it's something else? Do you think CLC would have thrived if Cube made different decisions about their career? I have loved CLC and their music since I first discovered them, and I truly wish the best for all the girls. I really recommend listening to their music, especially their post-Hobgoblin stuff, because it is genuinely great. Kepler is also one of my favorite groups now, and I'm so glad Eugen was given another opportunity to debut. I've made a playlist of all of CLC's music videos and linked it in the description if you're interested in checking them out. Remember, according to Sorn, this is not the end for CLC. So please support all of the girls' solo projects, as they are also immensely talented and have much more to offer outside of CLC. One last thing, I want to give a big thank you to Operation Kepler for helping me out with my script. She's super smart and kind, and she makes great content about the K-pop world, so go subscribe to her. Thank you everyone again for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.